Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this online service of the Shalom Centurion Christian Church. Thank you for joining us on YouTube, Facebook, and the Rainbow Gospel Radio. We're going to worship this morning, and we're going to have the Word of God brought to us by Dr. Cliff Ferguson. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our pages and channels so that you can access all of our services and updates. Before we worship, can we bow our heads and ask the Lord to come into our presence? Lord God, we pray that you bring the Holy Spirit into our lives, into our presence this morning as we worship and celebrate your glory. We're all going through so many difficult times at this point. The world is. But we trust in you, Lord. We believe that you will make it right. Help us to acknowledge the peace that you bring and to listen to the words that are going to be shared with us today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day. When I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul on fire God, I'm running for your heart I'm running for your heart Till I am a soul on fire Lord, I'm longing for your ways I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, restore the joy I have. Cause I have wandered, bring me back. In this darkness, lead me through. Until all I see. I'm running for your heart Till I am a soul on fire Lord, I'm longing for your ways I'm waiting for the day When I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul on fire Lord, let me burn for you again Glory, the King of Glory, 
the King above all kings, who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. And this is amazing grace, this is unfailing love. That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who rules the nations with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory. The King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I would be set free. I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was saved. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You will lay down your life That I may be set free I sing for all that you've done for me. Hey. 
surrounds me You never fail And you won't start Call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, and you. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk across the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are Yeah. 
for us to share in God's Word. Now, a lot has happened in the last time and we've seen changes. We've seen changes politically. We've seen changes in our country. But we also have seen that we are still sitting with the virus, that things are working in that way. But today I've got something to share with you and that is that God changes the chaos into order. And when God changes chaos into order, Things really happen, and things that happen, and big things happen. And this is a time when God wants to change your chaos, the chaos of this world, into an order that He can only bring. And I want to share that with you this morning. So let us pray in the name of the Lord. Lord, I come to you this morning, Father, in Jesus' name, your Son. And whilst you were there with creation, and whilst, Lord, you were there, and you were crucified on the cross, and you rose from the dead, and you ascended into heaven, you are still here in presence and presence in the universe. Your presence in the universe is felt by the Holy Spirit as well. And I know, Lord, that in this day, this is the greatest time that we can accept God's power and His glory. And we can start seeing the light of God in our lives. And that the light of God will change the situations that we have when the light falls on the situation. So the situation changes as God's light comes upon it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I bless everyone this morning. I bless everyone listening, seeing, and I believe, Lord, that you can change the mindset of people today to become positive as God wants it. In the name of Jesus, I ask this and I say thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Well, if we have a look at, and I'm taking you right to the beginning of the Bible this morning, I'm taking you to Genesis 1 verse 1, and I want you to go there with me. In Genesis 1, it says, in the beginning when God created the universe, and we all look at the seven days of creation as the seven days of creation of earth, but God actually created the entire universe. He was there before the universe. And we don't know how, we don't know when, we don't know how long. There was no timeline linked to the universe. 
You see, God created the universe. That's the first scripture that comes upon uh, in the Bible. It says, and God created the universe. And we are so, uh, so naive that we, we work on the creation story of the earth instead of the creation of the universe. The universe is what God's place is. It's not earth. The footstool of God is earth. And that's the big, big difference that we have here. And one point, uh, uh, the verse 2 says, The earth was formless and desolate. In other words, chaotic. The raging ocean that covered everything was engulfed in total darkness. And the Spirit of God was moving over the water. That means the Spirit of God was already present, omnipresent, and also surveying and doing surveillance over the earth to see what can be created out of it. Then God commanded, there, let there be light and light appear. And this, I want to stop there because this is exactly where the order of God comes is when light appears. And when you have your problem as well, it's when God brings upon you the light of the situation and he lights up the situation and that is where the order is created out of chaos. So when God created the universe, there was no timeline. As I said before, there's no timeline to the universe. It could be billions of years. It could be millions of years, as you think, because God did not put a timeline on the universe. He put time in the universe in place to control the human being from sunrise to sunset so that you could have seasons and that you could have life and that you could live a life, a positive life. It's funny they haven't found any other creatures like us anywhere in the universe. They're looking for us all over. They're looking for, for similarities all over. But let me tell you that God knows why he put the earth in place. And he knows why he put his footstool in place. And he knows exactly why he counts the hairs on the head of these little ants. Seven billion, more than seven billion of them. And he knows exactly what goes on with each of them. Microscopically, God knows out of the universe. He knows exactly what's happening with you and with me. Important thing that God, the earth was formless at that stage. Now, irrespective of what we go through with, with the evolution theories, irrespective of what you think of geography and all the geography of the world, it's interesting and it's interesting to study and it's all man-made man material. But the God-made material is the universe. The God-made material is the earth. The God-made material is everything that surrounds us, everything that we work with, and life in general. My brother and sister, you will not live without the breath of God, without the will of God. If God wanted to, He could wipe out this world with one word as He created the word with or the world with, with, with the word. You see, whilst this earth was engulfed in darkness and suddenly the light appears, some sort of, of chaos that was there is suddenly lit up and everything comes to light and everything seems so bright and everything changes and suddenly this formless a globe that we live on suddenly becomes this blue globe that can be seen throughout the universe. Suddenly the light as it switches on, it's not dark anymore. It comes to life and it comes to light and the light shows the beauty of this piece of, of, of rock inside of the universe. And then God decides to bring order to this place, which he calls his footstool in Psalms. He says this is the footstool of God. The psalmist speaks about that. And he brings order to this place that's so chaotic, that's so, so problematic, that's got, no, that's got no form, no real form. God brings everything together. 
And now, my brother and sister, I want to take you to John 1 verse 1. And this is so interesting that where the light, the original first light, I believe, came from the lighting up of, of this new creation, this new project that God took on His footstool to get the footstool created. I believe that it, it was with John 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And from the very beginning, the Word was with God. Through Him, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without Him. The Word was the source of life. This life brought light to people. The light shines in darkness and the darkness has never put it out. In other words, we go back to the theory of the darkness is actually just the absence of life, of light. The, the darkness is the absence of light. And it is just so that some people, and, and the science says that darkness is actually non-existent. It, it's just that there's an absence of light. So when light comes, darkness just disappears. It, it moves out of, of, of the area that it is. But there's two important phenomena I want to bring to you today. And that first one is that the order comes from the Creator. And as the order of the universe came from the Creator, this order was brought through to the human being. And this order will remain in place, even though the human being might try to break the order of God. God's order will always be in place. And out of the chaos, the chaos of the universe, God brought order, order also for you and for me, and order in all our facets, which is the spirit, the mind, or the soul, and the body. God brought order, and He created us to be ordered people. The Creator comes with divine light, and this divine light shines on you and on me. It shines on your spirit, it shines in your mind, and it shines on your body. If you accept Christ as your personal Savior, you need to know these things, because our universe came out of chaos. The chaos of sin brought us into the light of God, and as God's light shone upon our sin, and just it disintegrated it all by the blood of Jesus Christ, we know that the darkness of our mind could be repaired and this darkness in our mind as God called us to light must be taken out so that we can move into a place where God can work with us where God can break the, the spells that are put on our minds so that we can work <coughs> in accordance with the Holy Spirit and this we can be spirit guided and spirit full men and women of God. You see, at this time, our chaos is that we're burdened with disease. You know, this burden carries you forward, it carries you backward, it go it follows you into the, the shopping center, it follows you home, it follows you all over, and you've got this sort of uh, feeling that, that something is going to happen to you or to your family, and this is going to end because God is going to bring order out of the chaos. This is a time when, when everything that's chaotic, God is going to bring a new order. Now everybody's waiting for the new order of, of the world, but I'm waiting for a new order of God through the Spirit, where the Spirit will move and He will change people's lives and change people's minds and change people heart, people's heart, where He will heal them from disease, where He will fix immune systems to take on the disease. And I know that God is going to create new orders out of all this chaos. This is the time when God's going to fix the burden of disease and shattered dreams where your, where your dreams were shattered, where you feel that you had a dream and suddenly your business crashes into the, into the dust and you have nothing left. Suddenly you had a job and suddenly you don't have one. And suddenly you're sitting with all these things. You've got debts to pay that you haven't got money for. You don't have food on the table. This is a time when God is going to start changing your chaos into blessing. I believe that. I preach that. And I'm going to stick to it because my God is greater than any disease. My God is greater than your burden. My God is greater than anything that's going to take on 
that you've been taken on. You say, Pastor, my marriage is on the rocks. I need, I need this fixed. And my relationships are on the rocks. I, I, I can't relate to people anymore. The things that, that I do and, and things that I want to do, I just don't seem to get to them because everything just seems shattered and wrong and, and nothing, there's no light. Everything seems dark. I'm walking in darkness. I get up in the morning, I'm dark. When I leave and I go to sleep at night, I'm in darkness because I don't have hope. This is the time when God can change that and he wants to heal your broken heart he wants to bring you to a point where, where your broken heart is going to be healed this is the time when God wants to change that that's so deep down in you that's seated in your heart that's breaking you day by day that's breaking your mind up piece by piece this is the time that God wants to change that he wants to call you to something new this is the newness the chaos that you that you relate to God wants to change that into a godly order. John 12 verse 35 says, Jesus answered, the light will come, will be among you a little while longer. That's why Jesus is on earth. Continue on your way while you have the light so that the darkness will not come upon you. For the one who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. Is that not your problem today? That you, because your life has become so dark, you don't know what the future holds for you. You don't have no hope. You don't know where you have to go in the next or second next, next day or, or anything that's going to go forward. You just don't know. This is a chaotic moment that's going to change back to order. God's calling you to order. 12 verse 36 says believe in the light then while you have it so that you will be the people of the light after Jesus says this he went and hid himself from them I just want to bring this to you as well as sometimes sometimes it's time that you that that God really starts working with you now Jesus speaks to his disciples here and says the light will be with you for a while but then he transfers the light and he says but then the light will be on you then you will be the people in the kingdom of light then you will be the light but when the light loses its light, it's dark, there's nothing there. And that's what you're asking me this morning. You're saying, fine, but then we've lost the light of Christ. We've lost it. We've lost the plot. We don't know. We don't have direction because we're going around in darkness. This chaotic moment is causing trouble for me and for my family. And I need to know where I'm going to change this and how I'm going to change this. You see, it's time that God lights up your life. And this is the time where God's going to give you direction and it's going to be new direction. You think you were blessed in the old times, you see. I think God wants to bless you better in the end times as, as this comes your way and as jobs sit and, and, and he has all these boils and, and he's in disease. And he cuts himself, or, or shall I say, he, he actually scrapes off these boils with, 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 with the pieces of clay. Uh, and and it, just, it just hurts and it's painful. Think about this. Even his wife doesn't want to come near him. She says, oh, you stink. This is the time when, when, when Job is in chaos. He's sitting with the disease. He's, he's already troubled in his body. And he just doesn't know what, he doesn't know where to go. But when Job... The Bible says when Job prayed for his friends, he didn't pray for himself. He prayed for his friends. When he started caring, when he started seeing that others are in need, when he saw the needs of others, when he saw the trouble of others, when he saw that others needed forgiveness, he gave it to them through prayer. And when he did that, his breakthrough came and his chaos was changed to order. Now I want to bring that and relate that back to you. So the chaos that you have today, God wants to bring that to order only for you, not for anyone else. God wants to bring your household back to order. God wants to bring your family back into you to order. And he's calling the order, his order on your life. 
on your family, on your marriage. He's calling his order back to you, back to the church. And the order of God is heavenly. It's great. It's good. And we're going to start being decisive people. We're going to start working the, because God doesn't give us a time where we're unsure. Yes, we go through insecurities. But when we're sure and when we have the direction in God, we will move in that way and God will change our hearts and He will change us, our minds and He will bring us back into the godly order which He ordained and predestined even before your birth. You see, I, I, I want this heavenly order because heavenly order starts with light. You see, when God brought order to the universe, the first thing, and He brought order to earth, the first thing He did is He switched on light. He switched on light. And guess what? When God brings order to the new Jerusalem at the end, what is going to happen? He's going to switch off light and switch on the godly light. He will be the light. He is the light of the world. And also in the new Jerusalem, I expect the, the light of Christ to be so great that we will see the light. We will walk in the light. We won't be blinded by the light because we will understand it. But the light will be so great that we will know godly things. Our minds will be set in, in light. Our bodies will be set in light. And, and the thinking and our spirits will be set in light. This is what God has ordered and ordained for His people. And He wants to bless us. And He wants to bring us into the newness that He's called us for. See, bringing order into your house may be that you have to change some things. Bringing order might be that you might not have to do things that you're doing now, but you're going to have to do things differently. In, in the workspace, we will always say that, that you must not work harder, but you must work smarter. Well, I, I sometimes when you work smarter, you even start working more harder because you're working more smarter. And, and, and there's uh, something that becomes problematic with the work ethic that was put in place and especially the Protestant work ethic. I'm speaking to that this morning because because everything seems to be about work. But we need to take us one step back and go back into the the ethic of the Word of God and the ethic of, of being a disciple and the ethic of the Spirit. And once we bring all those that ethos back into place, then we will be something greater. And out of the chaos, we have an ethic that's unbreakable, unbeatable, and godly. God wants us to do that. And that's going to change worldly behavior. So you see the chaos that is here at the moment brought the world to a standstill. And yet people don't want to believe that this could be the hand of God. They want to see the hand of, of human beings in this. Let me tell you, my brother and sister, God can bring, and it's proven that God can also bring this whole world to a standstill. We think we're above and we're supreme and we're supreme race. But let me tell you, my God is still in control. Whether it be with or without a virus, He is in control. And He can bring anybody to a standstill, anyone. And He can take anyone's life away, anyone. He can be the most powerful or she can be the most powerful person in the world. And God can bring them to a standstill through disease. He can bring them to a standstill in their thought and in their mind, and He can bring them to a standstill in what they're doing. He can take away their life even. That is how powerful my God is. My God doesn't have to appoint assassinate or assassins to do the job. It can be done just through the organics of a person. That is how powerful my God is. He knows every organ. He knows where to switch them on. He knows where to switch them off. And don't play with God. The most important thing is that we've got to get to a point where we've got to decide whether we're going to take the chaos of the world or we're going to take the order of God. We don't challenge God. We don't challenge the things that God does. We don't challenge what's happening in the world. We challenge the way that we think and the way we behave as children of God. And then God will work through us. Then the light of God will bring upon us what is holy and what is good. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6 says, uh, The God who said, Out of darkness the light shall shine, is the same God who made us 
His light shine in our hearts to bring us the knowledge of God's glory shining in the face of Christ. The knowledge of God's glory shining in the face of Christ. Bringing back to you this now is when God's light shines and when we've got the glory of Christ in our hearts and in our minds, God's glory brings light upon your problems. It changes the chaos. The chaos can't stand because now it is elevated. Everything is elevated to a point of light where you can actually see what is happening in front of you. You can see what's right and you can see what is wrong. And everything around you, everything that surrounds you is in the light of God. And the knowledge of God is empowers you to make decisions, to make different things happen and to change what is wrong into right and to do what God has given you. You see, the knowledge Knowledge of God will bring upon you solutions that, that nobody has ever dreamt of. And even some people might take away your solutions from you. But at the time when God gives you the solution, people will look up to you because they know that you are, are God-fearing and that you have the knowledge of Christ in you. You have the light of God shining through your mind, through your spirit and your mind. And that is why you can act in the way you're acting. This is something that has to be revealed to the world. And that's you and your ideas and everything that's great about you because God's light shines through your mind. And as God God's light pierces through your mind. You have mind-changing moments. You have innovating, innovating moments. You have moments of change. And you can bring change to this chaos in the world through what God can do in your mind today. This is all special stuff. This is a special time. This is a special time where the church can be used to change chaos and bring about the good things in life and, and, and proclaim the best on, of what God has on, on the church as well. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7 says, Yet you have the spiritual treasure are like common clay pots in order to show that the supreme power belongs to God and not to us. For verse 8 says, We are often troubled, but not crushed. Sometimes in doubt, but never in despair. You see, the big thing is, you may doubt, and sometimes it's good not to be uh, overambitious. It's good sometimes to also say, you know what, I don't know. It's good to know that sometimes you have to stand back and let the Spirit of God guide you because you actually don't know. I love the words that the philosopher said is, is you don't know what you don't know. And I still believe that in, in my philosophy, I believe that God put that in your in place to protect the mind. Because if you knew what you did not know, you would be looking and searching all your life. You would, you would never stop trying to just get more and more and more because you would know what you don't know. Now, because God put that part in you that you don't know what you don't know, it seems to seal off the concern about what you don't know and you only relate to what you do know. But God protects the mind of the human being and that's how His light also comes in and protects you. But then the revelation of God comes through light and He changes your mind for that split second. He changes your mind from, from this, this, this mind that's, that's fleshly thinking and He changes into a spiritual mind and in the spiritual mind He gives you unctions and He gives you the revelation and He changes problems and He gives you solutions and as those solutions come, things just happen and things, your burdened life becomes unburdened and the chaos becomes godly order. Order. I'm waiting for this because you see when we start creating order in the light of God then we're going to start listing our troubles before God and we're going to say God I need solution for, for trouble problem number one I need solution for problem number two I need solution for problem number three I need solution for problem number four 
Now, if I bring the Pareto principles to you this morning where, where 80% of your problems would be solved if you could solve the 20% of the big ones. And now look at the 20% of your big problems. Bring them to God this morning so that God can take those 20% of your big problems and change them and turn them around today so that they can become exactly out of, out of your mind so, so that all your problems can go away. Because if you solve those, those big problems, those 20%, those five big problems, all the other problems will seem like no they'll just go away because they are all just straws that get attached to to your problem let's resolve today that we know that when the light of god shines on our five biggest problems those five biggest problems if they get solved one by one by one by one by one, it means theoretically that we can become more ordered in Christ and the light of Christ can shine in and bring you everything that you require for life and your life can change, your life can move and you can become a person that God is godly, a person that the light shines into and out of and the light of Christ can, can indulge and, and help other people. And this light that you've got, you can start sharing. And when you start sharing your order, other people's chaos becomes orderly as well. And this is the great moment that God has called us to do. Because you see, God is going to change the things that you yourself have made. And sometimes you've made problems for yourself, but God is going to change those. Sometimes we, we have to choose what is right and it's more difficult to choose what is right sometimes than to choose what is wrong. And sometimes we don't know between what is right and what is actually wrong because sometimes we say, if I do right, I'll be doing wrong. And if I do wrong, it'll also be wrong because some people just can't be satisfied. Have you been there? That's exactly the point this morning is, is that chaos must change to order and God's going to call you to the order, the order of God. It's going to change your life and it's going to bring you into the newness of God. This is the time when God's calling you to a new order, a new time, a new time. It's not going to be a religious time. It's going to be a spiritual time. It's not going to be about religion. It's not going to be about what I think or what I don't think. It's going to be the order of God. And that order of God is not religious, my brother and sister. It's purely spiritual. It's the light of Christ. It's bringing everything that God has bringing me it's not going to be about my piousness it's not going to be about my good deeds it's not going to be about how good i am or how bad i am it's going to be about the light of christ that shines in and through me and then people will see the light they won't see my darkness they will see what's good in me and you see that'll make us avoid all consequences because the consequences of my sin are, are things that I pay for every day. The consequences of my sin might not be good. And, and that is something that stays with me all my life. But I want to say to you this morning that even the consequence of sin can change to order. When God's chaos, God, God to chaos, God, God's light comes upon the chaos of your life, it'll change to an order, an order of supreme light. And the light of God will be on there to break the, the order of your past, to break away the things that are holding you to the past, the things that are reminding you of the wrongs in the past. God will bring them all into His light and change them. This is a time where God's light must shine onto you to change what you have and to bring you back to an order that God has ordained for you. 1 John 1 verse 6 says, and we're going to 1 John not the same writer, by the way. One John uh, and two, uh, one one John, two John, and three John, written by a different writer. And he says, "If then we say that we have the fellowship with Him, yet the same time we live in darkness, we are lying both in our words and in our actions. We are lying." Lying, that means we are, are not telling the truth. We're not living in the truth. We are lying about both our words in, and in our actions. We are not truthful about ourselves. Now, my brother and sister, the first thing that you've got to do now, if you want to start creating solutions about yourself and in yourself, you need to be honest. You need to be honest and truthful about yourself. You need to commit and admit 
to the issues that you have. Take those issues, put them down there and look at the consequences of what you caused, the problems that you caused and also the sa at the same time what other people have caused for you and just put the five big ones down there because this is the time where God wants to bring you to order. He wants to bring your life and order it differently for you. He's going to help you to do that. You see, the order that Christ brings is something that's going to heal your spirit for the first thing. Now, your spirit, whether you like it or not, and whether you believe differently, I don't mind, or whether you come with a psycho psychological twist to this, or whether you come to the spiritual twist on the other side, whether you think you're the holy of holies and, and you're holy moly, I don't care. What I'm saying is sometimes you have uh, the chaos that has to be changed into order, and that's the order of God. And when Christ comes with His light, He will change your spirit first. And when the spirit man or woman is changed and, and brought into the compelling thoughts of God, and, and these compelling thoughts are changed by the Holy Spirit, tuned into God, then my mind changes. The things of my mind, the things I used to think about change. The things that I used to, that used to concern me change. And this brings about a whole di new dimension into my spirit life, my spirit man, woman. And I live, that's where I live. That's the birth of God, and that's what I have to respect today. It starts ordering my mind, and when my mind starts being ordered, things change for the good. And I'm not this bad person anymore. I'm not seeing as a bad person. I'm seen as a child of light. I'm seeing as an ordered person. I'm seeing in the order of Christ. I'm seen in a godly place. And I'm seeing that I work in the godly space. And that is what's so good about this today is this will break your depression. If you're depressed today, this is what's going to break it is if God's order comes into being. If God changes the way you think and the way you feel, this is when the order of God is going to bring you back and change your mind and change your soul so that you can be made whole and that Differences can start happening. Things can be different in your home, in your life, in the place that you live, and in the place that you work. God has called you for a breaking of depression, and your depressed mood, the darkness that you are in, God's going to bring you to light in that, because God is going to revive your soul. You see, the soul, the heart, the, the, the matters of the heart, and and um, we, we, we have everything in this gray matter in our head, but we feel it down here. God programmed us so well that, that it, whilst we're thinking in the mind and we're feeling in the mind, we, we've got this feeling of hurt in the heart that God made your heart synchronize to your mind. It's so good. It's so great. But the mind then, then feels in the heart. And, and the, you, you feel when you say your heart sore, you feel it in the heart. It's, it's matters of the heart. And, and while the mind is troubled, the heart feels it all. And, and sometimes you just sit there and you, you're heartbroken. You're broken down and, and you feel this heaviness in your heart today. This is where God wants to change that. He wants to revive your heart so that you can have a heart, a light heart. And when you have this light heart, God's going to change the way that you think and the way that you do because it's going to be easier because Jesus says I give you a light yoke in my own words and my yoke is light and God wants to take off the heavy yoke of depression off you and he wants to put the light yoke of Christ on you which is the yoke of light by the way he wants to reassure you Christ wants to reassure you on your deliverance today you need to be delivered and you have been delivered and, and a lot of you have given your hearts while we've been preaching this thing. You've given your hearts to the Lord. I believe many people have, have lost their addictions. God has taken your addiction away. Praise God for that. And we're going to hear testimonies going out on that. But now's the time when your mind must create a position for you where you have a new order. And in this new order of the Spirit, you work in the Spirit and you work with the Holy Spirit so that you can be a blessed person. 
So pastor, how do I face the future? This is the way you're going to face it. You're going to believe that your chaos is changing to order in this day. And this new order is going to bring you into planning great things. This is the time when you've got to sit back. If you are sitting in a position now where you've lost everything, start planning. Wow, Pastor, how can I plan with nothing? Yes, you can. You're not planning with nothing. You're planning with the light of Christ that's going to create order out of your darkness. And if you're going to, get, you're going to start using this, your chaos is going to change into a godly order. You might have a new business coming. You might have a new job coming. You might have a promotion coming. You might have something big, big, big coming just because you started planning. When things go wrong, start planning. This this is the time when the light of God can be shed on your plans. And as, as your plans start coming and fulfilling, this is the time when God's going to move over you, your plans and everything, and change this big stuff of chaos that you've got now. You're going to change it into great stuff that you can work with and that you will be successful in. Call the blessing of God in your plan this morning. That's what I'm asking you. And please don't fear what's coming. If we keep on fearing what's coming, we're never going to make it. Because God knows, He only knows, that this day is a day of light. And when He proclaims light on your life, He will never ever leave you alone. He will always be with you. He will always lead you. He will always guide you. Let us pray. Lord God, I come to you in this morning and I pray, Lord, that you will bless the word of God in, in our hearts. I, I pray, Lord, that you will change our chaotic minds into blessed minds. I pray that the light of God will shine through our spirits, into our minds, into our hearts, and Lord, into our actions, and that everything we will do, we will do in the the light and with the light of God bless us today and make this a special moment for everybody I pray, pray Lord that this will be a moment of change a moment that everybody will understand that God is brought into their lives and God is changing all this chaos into something special and something good in Jesus name we say thank you Lord amen yeah so that now there Lord thank you I, I believe that you have homework to do and I'm going to ask you that you go and list your five biggest problems today list your five biggest problems if you want to you can also send me an email it's prayer at shalomcenturion.co.za but, but, but list your five biggest problems and you're going to start finding solutions for those problems. If you find the solutions for those five, things are going to change. So for the week going forward, I've got five solutions to seek of five biggest problems so that God can change by chaos into godly order in Jesus' name. This is a special time. God's going to bless you. And in this week, have the blessings of God on your five biggest problems so that God can solve every one of them. This is the time to turn chaos into the light of God, which is the order and have a heavenly order on your life. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Thank you for listening. See you next week. Amen.